Hi, David. How are you? Hey, Benjamin. I'm very well. Great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being live from New York, David. So you're the head of uh, private equity at the New York Retirement System. And as a start, um, we would be very happy if you could share a little bit with us uh, what's happening in the U.S. in terms of the current pandemic, of course, but also the, uh, the current political context uh, and the impact of this situation on the U.S. private equity industry. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think when, we, when we look at 2020, that really is a remarkable and extraordinarily challenging backdrop for the New York City uh, private equity portfolio and the industry as a whole, right? So we had a pandemic, we had economic dislocation like we've never experienced before. And then we've also had, um, at least in the United States, right, the murder of George Floyd in May of this year, which triggered social and political movements calling for social justice and the elimination of systemic racism. And on top of that, we've had an unprecedented and controversial and uh, contentious presidential election just last month in November. So the backdrop is one that I think that uh, we've never experienced before here in this country. And many of those factors have influenced um, the industry globally. When I look at uh, the current situation um, on the pandemic front, on the healthcare front, um, as many have seen in the news, we are going through a second wave of COVID-19 infections. Um, the death rates and the infection rates have been increasing in the United States. There are some states and cities that have gone into government endorsed lockdowns. And then on the, on the political front, I am like very optimistic and encouraged. We had a controversial uh, presidential election campaign season. Um, the, the U.S. population voted. Uh, we, we've hit a point where some critical dates, um, if you look at December 14th, uh, that's going to be when uh, the electoral votes are counted. Um, and then on January 20th is the official inauguration of the president-elect and the vice president-elect. I'm confident that the U.S. institutions are sturdy and solid enough that we'll have a successful political transition. And David, what is the impact on the strategy of the New York uh, retirement system? I mean, what, is, what was the plan at the beginning of 2020? How much will yeah. you be investing this year? How does it impact what you have done this year? Yeah, you know, I think that's the remarkable thing. When, when I look back on our strategy and our pacing for 2020, if I think of December 2019, the plan we had, both in terms of fund commitments as well as strategic initiatives, our team executed flawlessly. I think the remote environment presented challenges, but in our industry, in the LPGP world, I think we've been able to use technology and existing relationships and the long histories we have with each other to conduct business more or less as usual. So if I look at 2020, we were right on top of our strategic pacing plan, which resulted in about uh, $3 billion plus in fund commitments, which is consistent with our recent year's pacing. And when I look forward to 2021, I think of it as really steady as she goes. Our strategy has not changed and we're going to continue investing. I think what we did, like many LPs, was in late March and early April, we had to assess the impact of the pandemic and the volatility of the capital markets on our broader portfolios. What I've learned is that maybe two lessons, one on our observations, one on the GP side and one on the LP side. On the GP side, we found that most of our managers manage the liquidity at the portfolio company, company level very well. And then finally, they also communicated effectively with LPs. There were regular COVID update calls. There was granular detail and discussion around those portfolio companies that were challenged and those that were doing really well. And I think on the LP side, to generalize for the industry, there was very consistent pacing. I think there were moments when peer institutions maybe paused but realized there was a, a real interest in maintaining vintage year exposure in 2020. 
David, maybe one question with respect to uh, emerging managers. What is your position at New York State Retirement System with respect to emerging managers and their role in connection with the capacity of the VC and private equity industry to renew itself? Yeah, that, and I, th I think the, the phrase you used, Benjamin, on renew is critical. I think that, so New York City, we've had a emerging, an emerging manager program that our team executes since 2012. It's core to our strategy. We have a long-term goal of uh, approximately 10% of our annual pacing going into emerging managers. And if you think of our portfolio, we're about 60 plus percent US North America and low 20s percent Western Europe. And that's the geographic split of our portfolio and our emerging manager program targets those two main geographies. Now, this is the thing, the framework I have, the way I think about it is, What is the private equity industry? If you take a cocktail shaker and you add a 10-year limited partnership structure, a carry-based compensation system, and human nature, but it's not just regular human nature, right? It's private equity, venture capital, alpha, return generating human nature. You throw that in the cocktail shaker, you shake it up, and that's a private equity industry. What that means is that there will always be some combination or some percentage of firms who don't transition the leadership roles or the economics, and you'll have frustrated star performers who will branch out and start their own firm. They want control over their destiny. They want control over the portfolio. They want to create wealth for themselves and their investors. So we really see emerging managers as an opportunity to also scale with the next generation of leadership in the industry. And I think this is the key thing. I think it's, there's a positive selection bias, right? I don't think it's, you know, you know, sort of like in, in football or soccer terms, you know, kind of your, you know, right bench player who says, I'm going to leave the firm and I'm going to raise capital and I'm going to start my own firm. It's usually the risk takers the successful investors, those with a track record. And what's interesting is in the US market, there are pools of dedicated capital and programs similar to New York City. And so for us, it's an important part of our portfolio construction and we take a very long-term strategic view. So we, we've got a few seconds left, uh, David. What is your view with respect to Europe? I know that you have invested in Europe and in France in the past. Yes. Uh, given the situation, what is your view today uh, uh, with respect to Europe and France? Yeah, briefly, I would say, given the depth of the European market, um, it's always going to be core to our portfolio after the US market. That will continue to be the case, both with established managers as well as emerging managers. Um, we did announce a program this summer. We started a $600 million program with Newberger Berman as our partner, focused on early stage first time funds, also looking at opportunities in Europe. So what my, in, in my closing remarks, what I'd probably like to say is, I would encourage LPs, uh, both in Europe and globally, to give a very close look at emerging managers, because there is a strategic benefit. One, you can generate alpha, You can renew your portfolio, and then you have the opportunity to be a strategic important LP at an early stage and scale with them. The other thing I would mention for the GP perspective, especially for BPI and for French and European GPs, is I think this remote environment in many ways has leveled the playing field. At New York City, I could hop on a subway and I could meet with 20 of our GPs in Midtown Manhattan. Right. In the remote environment, it's just as easy for an international GP to meet with a US LP or a Latin American LP or an Asian LP using technology. So as I think about the environment we're in today, I think LPs and GPs, let's use the time wisely because when the pandemic ends and the immunizations and the therapies are widely distributed, we want to look back on this period and say we took advantage of the time and the technology available to lay a foundation for strong relationships. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for sharing your views and for being live from New York again. We appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Benjamin.